well, we heard that you were close to him and, you know, that you were one of the people that was getting molested by him. And I'm like, no, that's not true. He's like, well, everything is pretty much in place, you know, if you just pretty much tell them, you know, he's, he was telling me that he's on a payroll by the FBI. He pretty much, everything was already in place. Um, after that, I haven't seen him for a while. Um, I was kind of mad at that. Um, Fatima came to me one time, called my house, and she told me I need to stop visiting the land, stop visiting Paz because, you know, they was planning on doing a Waco situation. And, of course, I had to do more research on that. And pretty much to say that they were going to come up there with body bags, which they did, I found later on. And they were going to pretty much just shoot everybody. You know, no questions asked. And as soon as I heard that, it was in 2001, I sat down with Pops and I told him. And he's like, oh, I'm not worried about that. They have no reason to come up here. We're not doing anything that would, you know, cause me to even get incarcerated. You know, like, why would they want to do that? You know, and of course, Jacob, he was kind of angry, feeling that he was, that he had something to do with his mother's death, because, um, she, which she died of an aneurysm. Um, he felt like, you know, it was his father's fault. Um, a few months later, they came back and visited me. Things was kind of different then. He realized that, you know, I wasn't going on their side of what they were doing because I felt like that was, you can't, you can't, you can't go against your family, you know. Um, after that, Fatima found that I was still visiting up there, and she pretty much kind of cut me off because she was pretty pissed. Like, well, you're going up there. Well, that's a choice that you're going to take. You're just going to get caught with the rest of those people. So I'm like, okay. You know, after that, just turned on the news. I was living in South Carolina, like I said. Turned on the news one day and seen that they raided the land. You know, seen people from the, I guess, a camera view of a helicopter, people laying on the floor and a lot of SWAT teams all over the land. So I called my little brother who was living up on the land at that time, and I wasn't able to get in touch with anybody. Nobody was picking up the phones. So I called my mom. And she's panicking on her way up there to try to find out what's going on. Um, she said she did get a call from somebody from the land telling them that it was a raid. And pretty much they had everybody at gunpoint, even the younger babies and the children. So that's pretty much, you know, my part of the conspiracy case. And I also wanted to stress, um, when I did go up on a, when he was in trial and... They actually took the jurors out of the room so that they couldn't hear my testimony and then brought them back in the room and told me what I could and could not say. So that, when I, of course, when I saw that, I realized they had a special, special case for him. You know, they had plans of what, what the outcome was already going to be. Now, it's good that you touched on that, Leah, because we did want to get into that next. Um, all three of these individuals were there and ready to testify on behalf of Dr. Malachi Z. York, and they were not permitted to. I think from what you've heard them say today, you can understand what the government's motivation was in blocking them, because they break the case wide open, expose it for what it really is and what it's really about. Um, Sister Leah touched on her experience. If Sister Fair and Brother Basil, if you could discuss your experience being blocked to various degrees um, when you were in Brunswick at the federal trial at this time. Uh, not a problem. Um, I was in Brunswick for the, um, the trial was uh, subpoenaed with the federal subpoena by the attorney at the time to come to the court and give my testimony for the master teacher, uh, Malachi New York. I know she was allowed in the courtroom and he was allowed in the courtroom. I wasn't even allowed inside of the courtroom to say anything, even whether, whether on or off the record. So, um... That, that's pretty much it. I wasn't to say anything at all to anybody, judge, juror, attorney, prosecution. I wasn't allowed to step into the courtroom to make a case on his behalf to show and prove with the knowledge that I have that he is innocent. I wasn't allowed to do anything. So... Given, being given this forum is an honor because I want 
people to know what happened, to know that he was wrongfully accused, that we weren't allowed to share what we know to be the truth to help free him. And I know I can only speak for myself. I'm sure they feel the same, but it's an honor for me to be able to do this because I was not allowed to speak. I was, and they, they told me my testimony was hearsay. And so that's why I couldn't testify. But from what I know, from the limited information that I do know, it seemed like all of it was hearsay to me. So that's, that's my experience. Go ahead, Brother Marcel. Thank you. Well, I was I was delighted when uh, I found out that that uh, Dr. Malakazi was going to trial because I knew then that would give me the opportunity to clear up the whole the motive. The trial was there. People, we, you know, those knew that, okay, if there's a conspiracy, why would they say these things? And the opportunity to establish the motive would have broke the ice. And uh, I waited two years to let it, to get it out because, you know, knowing about it is, is very, it's very something that is your life. The master teacher who raised you and taught you and responsible for your, for your growth. And then you have the opportunity to help him as he's helped us for so many years. It's a feeling of joy and anticipation. So going down there uh, and seeing going on as far as Judge Royal um, talking about the flyers that was being passed out, talking about the Internet, and knowing, okay, we had a lot of information on the Internet about the case and about the conspiracy, and he knew immediately once certain names were read on the defense side that was supposed to come testify, he knew who he was going to block and who he was going to let say what. So walking into the the, uh, the the courtroom, I'm thinking I'm going to testify, but the jurors were out of the box. So I'm looking like, okay, so the scrutiny is coming on. So I, I knew in my mind I had to be specific and make him see as much it was necessary to say, okay, let him testify because... I know the game, so it's like, you say anything that that he could possibly say, okay, well, that's hearsay, that's not irrelevant, and I knew you had to get to the point, but not say too much where it frightened the judge where he wouldn't let you testify, so either way, then it, to, in his mind, he was going to say no anyway, because it broke the case, it, it ripped a hole through it, when, I, when we talked about the uh, him coming to the, my, uh, my house, the South Beach trip, me hearing firsthand, the conspiracy, so, I mean, everything is hearsay because he wasn't there in, no, in none of the cases, so anything he hears is hearsay. So I had a problem with him by saying 98% of what you had to say had nothing to do with the case, which I should have said, okay, the 2% is necessary then. Put the 2% in, but he blocked it, and, you know, afterwards I, I broke down, I cried, I, it, it just hurt, and, you know, the sort of passion is still there from that moment. I, I knew that going into this courtroom, which going into the courtroom, the, uh, the prosecution, I knew they knew me. So I had to have a response prepared, which I anticipated, because what Moultrie said was, uh, aren't you on probation for supervised release for uh, bank fraud and computer fraud? Aren't you? So I said, yeah, that's the reason why Jake came to me. And he got, he left. He left that. <laughs> so... It was funny, but at the same time, it was very serious because it just really hurt. And it's right now for, for the master to be sitting.